So this is an electronic air cleaner made by Honeywell. Uh, there's different manufacturers. This is the, one of the most common ones. And on off button right here, uh, how to service this. You turn off the power to it, pull on this door. Sometimes it's a little hard to pull on this, but just jerk on it. Lift out from the bottom. This can be vacuumed and brushed off. And then most of these electronic air cleaners will have either two cells and two pre-filters or they may have an additional post filter on this other side. This one doesn't, but they all get washed the same way. So you pull out the electronic air cleaner uh, cell and some people like to mark them with markers so you know the way it was installed, so top and left, bottom, all those things. But um, you don't really have to. All you have to remember is the direction of the airflow. So in this furnace, the flow is, this is the return duct, goes through the filter, gets pulled into the blower, through the furnace and up. So the flow is to the left here. Sometimes we'll make a mark on the duct for you so that you know how to wash this. But anyway, um, this side of the cell will have these contacts here and the bottom doesn't. The top of this electronic air cleaner is what we call the power head. So this is where the electronics are and that's why you have the contact at the top and you have the direction going that way. So you just pull that out, pull the pre-filter out and sometimes we find when we come to service these that the first pre-filter and cleaning cell are fairly clean and then we pull the back ones out and they're plugged up because maybe people did not know that those were there and in this case they're about the same so this has been washed equally well over time so remember there's two of each so there's a pair of pre-filters pair of cells and this should be done about every three months. So um, if you don't use your furnace in the summer, then you just do it uh, fall, winter, and spring. If you have air conditioning, you should do it in the summer as well. And in some homes, you definitely need to do it more often than that. Um, next, we'll um, show you how to wash this and what the easiest way to do it. Here, I will show you my favorite way to clean this. Um, you can use simple green, you can use 409, you can use purple power, you can use almost any kind of household degreaser that you may have in your house or in your garage. Um, don't use anything heavy like brake cleaner or engine cleaner or wheel degreaser, anything heavy like that. Just a light degreaser. And these are designed to be washed with a degreaser and water, so don't be afraid of getting these wet. Um, I like to use a special product that's made for this purpose. It has a nice citrus scent to it and it's strong enough to clean the dust and the oils off of these filters, but not too strong to damage anything. So, because we do this day in and day out, we have a bigger tank here that we like to use. And then you can see how I spray this and soak this really well. All these plates, they're very narrow and close together and they're full of very tiny particle particles of dust. So you definitely want these to be soaked really well. So that's why this quantity is nice to use. This product that we use is safe for the bees and insects and the lawn and other plants in your garden and safe for pets. So there's no concern with using this in your flower bed, in your driveway or any place like that. Um, back porch, whatever's convenient for you. So as you can see, I'm just getting this soaked on both sides. And some people like to put this in the dishwasher, and that's okay. Uh, the only thing that I have found with that, occasionally, um, these ionizing wires right here, it's hard to see, but there's a wire right here which does the ionization, and that's how the particles get, uh, they get charged electrically and they get collected on these plates. Sometimes these wires uh, break, and they're about 40 plus dollars to fix just for a small wire. So. It's not a good thing to break those or uh, with the broken wire that portion of the cell is pretty much useless so it doesn't work anymore but you can see here hopefully you can see how how dusty these um, these are and as I'm doing this sometimes when I'm on concrete you can really see the black that comes off of them and it doesn't look like they are dirty when you first look at them 
we are actually collecting a tremendous amount of very fine dust dust that our human nose is not able to catch so these are doing a lot of good to make our air uh, healthier to breathe So, all right, and then I'm just gonna grab the hose and um, of course you can use a garden watering pistol or whatever, but um, just for the purpose of this video, I, I purposely am gonna use the old school thumb technique just to show you that the biggest thing that these thing, things need is regular cleaning, a cleaning solution and water and air dry, that's all, nothing complicated. So. So this is how these two compare. Obviously they weren't too bad to start with, but there's still a difference. So this one is clean, the other one is still dirty. So I'm going to quickly wash these. This shouldn't take more than five or 10 minutes. So um, once you do this a few times, obviously it'll go a lot faster. And then these cells right here, same thing. You want to get the water on all sides of the cells. And I'm sure as you watch this, you may think, well, there's a better way to do that. And there, pro there probably is. But I'm just showing what I do most often just because it's quick, it's fast, if this gets done regularly you don't have to wash off large quantities of dust or smoke or ashes or whatever the air quality is you know in that environment so this is usually sufficient and this product will clean off everything from nicotine to dust to spider webs to all kinds of things so there you go that's it so I wanted to show you two things. One, the way I like to carry these, and two, how I like to dry them. So when I carry these, I like to put these cells um, with the pre-filters in the middle, or if your unit has pre-filters and post-filters, all four components can go in the middle, and then this, these cells are face-to-face -face like this, and then I'm able to carry them through the house, through the crawl space, through the attic, you know, outside, back inside, it's just really easy to do it this way, okay? And then the other thing that I learned from a senior tech years and years ago was um, if you just let these sit like this, they can sit like that for hours and they won't get dry, especially at the bottom. And then you put them inside the unit and then it's not going to work because there's still water and moisture so or it can short out the power head. Um, so if you put them down in a corner and leaning back at the same time, then most of the water will drain out in probably half an hour or less. So if you do something like this up against a wall or if you have stairs around your house in the back in the front, you can do that. Okay, so you can do that. So basically I'm going leaning back to the side. So it's sitting on a corner basically. And same thing with these. And I found this to work really well. If the sun is out and it's a, a slightly windy outside, it's gonna dry those in probably 15-20 minutes. And for us, while we service your furnace or heat pump or, or air conditioner, we start by doing this, and then by the time we are done servicing, we come back, put this in, and everything is good. It's been approximately 30 minutes. These are pretty much dry. They're not even damp. The bottom is a little bit damp, but you can put them in if they are slightly wet as long as they're not dripping wet. These ones are pretty much dry. The bottom still has some water in it. Um, that's not a problem. And I'll show you what I do to deal with that. 
Again, this is one of the easier ways to carry these. All right, so here we are. We're going to install these cells, and this is the same if you have any, like, uh, a Hannibal electronic air cleaner. The, these are all, they all look the same. If, if it's an old one or a new one, they look the same. So, airflow to the left, these contacts to the top, power is off. Then you can install the pre filters. And the next piece, right here. Okay. And the bottom just hooks into this hole here. And then you just push that in. That's all you have to do. So when you turn power on, it's not going to work until there's a call for heat or you make a call for the fan to run. So the other thing I wanted to show you is this button right here. Um, if you hear a spark when you press this button, it means the coils are dry and ready to work and operational and everything is fine. Um, if you try this as soon as you put them in and it doesn't spark, you either have a bad coil, a problem with the power head, a problem with power to the unit, or they are still wet. So. While we do our tests, we're going to make sure that the fan runs and it's going to dry them off and then this light will come on while it's in operation. If you have any questions, um, if there's anything else I should have covered, feel free to ask. Thank you.